I can't help but laugh because this is the second time that I am going to be recording this. I was really good. I hit the record button for the audio, but I didn't do it for my screen recording. <laughs> Anyway, this video is about things I have found and learned that are really helpful to me in creating digital art in the Fire Alpaca program. I would like to give a shout out to Shy Fox. She has tutorials. She works in a clip art studio, so everything isn't transferable, but I've learned some really good key pointers from her. Moving forward here, Fire Alpaca is a free downloadable software. And once you have it downloaded, you're going to go and open up a new canvas. So go to File, New. When I was doing research on sizes that were appropriate and would transfer well to, say, Redbubble and maintain the image quality, the perspectives I was given was 6,480 pixels by 7,632 pixels and you can reverse that if you want your image wider than it is tall. 300 dpi's is ideal and at the bottom here you want to select as it says the RGB profile. This is going to help keep the colors as true to your eyes as it will be in the printing process and then select the CMYK profile. Let's go over just some of the pens, how they work, and look. So here's the pen tool. This one is a very straight, blunt line. The fade in, fade out tool does just as it says. Pencil, let's make that a little bit bigger. So these two pencils, they have a texture applied to them. So this has a canvas texture and this has a sketchbook texture. The eraser is another one you're going to use quite often. And airbrush is one I'm also rather fond of using, though I think I'm going to start using the pencil tools more often. So if you do something and you want to undo what you have just done, you can hit Command or Control Z. Otherwise, at the top left here, this looks like a skip. You can click that and that will get rid of it. If you're like, whoops, one too many, you can bring that back. If for some reason the things I am talking about, um, like my color palette here, my brush selection, brush control, navigator, and layer aren't showing up for you guys, go to the window option at the top and then you can look and see what is and is not selected, and then choose what you like for your drawing work surface. Okay, so over on the bottom right, I have layer. Let me just make this a lot bigger. So down here, we have what looks like a sheet of paper, a sheet of paper with an eight on it, a sheet of paper with a one, the file folder and then two pieces of paper, the arrow with two lines, and a delete button. So I always like to add a layer on top of this base layer. If for some reason you want to duplicate, and I've done this in the cozy forest scene where I would make a lantern and then I would duplicate it and just transform it, so we have that on layer two. You would click this double sheet of paper. That's going to duplicate. And then if you wanted to move that around, you can either select this tool here. So it's the arrow with the plus sign and move it. Or you can go to select transform or use command T. And that will let you rotate it, make it smaller, bigger. If you wanted it to look closer, that's a good way to do that. And then always make sure you go and click OK, otherwise it won't save what you've just done. Let's talk about this arrow pointing down. This is a merge. 
So if I want these to be on the same layer, I don't want them to be on separate, I'm going to click this. You want to be on top of the layer you want it to merge to. Okay, and then now they're going to move as one. You can see that there. Okay, let's delete that. Bring this back down to a more reasonable size. Okay, so I'm going to add a layer because I usually like to go back and just add a solid color under on layer one here. And I like to start with black. I'm going to use this fade in, fade out pen. If you're struggling to draw that circle and it is driving you nuts, it's taking away from your joy, or just in general, you would like to make art this way, go up to this top, it says shape, select it. There is this drop down, and you can select any of these line, polyline, polygon, rectangle, square, ellipse, circle, and curve. So I have the circle selected now, so I wanted to make a circle that's perfect. This is a great tool for that. If you're drawing on this layer and you want it to not stand out so much, maybe you want something behind it or in front of it to stand out more, over on the layer to the right here, we have opacity. And you can see how light we make that and you can actually see our transparent layer showing through. So that helps you play with your image a lot, it can give you some really cool effects. So I'm going to undo that. Let's go to our brush control. I kind of like working with 12 size. Um, so brush size, I kind of like to work with the 12. This is nice too, because if off the bat, you just want this stroke to be lighter. I keep forgetting to uncheck the shape if you want to go back to drawing normal. So if you wanted this stroke to be lighter, but the next one to be darker on the same layer, that gives you some nice wiggle room. I'm going to join these together if I can. Maybe we'll do that with that lighter opacity. Okay, so we have that. Now using the bucket tool can save you a lot of time. Um, you might like to just color it in little by little that's certainly an option that you can do however it makes staying within the lines difficult I also recommend doing your color on a separate layer from the line art and I like to go beneath the line art so I'm selecting layer one here let's put another layer so layer three is below layer two which we are going to label as line art and layer three so I'm just double clicking on the layer and that pops this up I'm gonna put as color I'm gonna add that it's color for the line art okay let's see if I did a good job closing off my areas here let's go with now let's go with a kind of neutral color here. Let's go brown. Okay, why did this happen? Because we're on another layer and there is no line art telling it to stop. And up here you see the reference, it says active layer. I should change that to canvas because that's going to take into account the ink that is already down. Now let's try it. There we go. It's kind of not filling in super great. There we go. So something on this bottom layer when I erased it was affecting this. So these little gray dots, clicking and unclicking them hides the layer from being utilized and viewed and makes it visible. So we're making a nice ribbon here, <laughs> it looks like. Okay, 
Now going up to the line art layer, I'm going to use Protect Alpha. This is a really fantastic tool. So this is going to only let you change and manipulate the, I'm going to call it paint, ink, that is on this layer. So if I don't want my line art to be so harsh, maybe I want these to match or possibly erase them, um, I can do so by selecting this pen tool. It's a little bit big. Zoom in. And I want this ribbon to look like it is behind this horizontal stripe. So we are going to just color it in. Erasing would make more sense, but I'm trying to show you guys the Protect Alpha. Let me do it so that you can see it actually and appreciate it better. Okay, and because I'm using this pen fade in, fade out, it's giving us that odd color. Okay, so you can see, even though I am drawing all over the place, it's only affecting the ink that is on this layer. So let's go ahead and erase that. So the eraser that I have selected is the sketchbook eraser, which can give you a pretty good effect, but I want a nice clean line. And then I'm going to go back to this color line art and we are going to fill that in. So if you want to match the color exactly, use this eyedropper tool, click the color you want, it'll match it, go back to your pen tool, and then fill it in. So I know I said I wanted this looking like it's underneath the horizontal, but obviously I erased the wrong lines, so it's going to be going over and it's going to look great. Okay, there's a little bit of a loose end here with this line art. I'm just going to go in and erase it. There is also a bucket erase right here. So you can use that for some things that has made it a lot easier. Also in some regards. Like if you don't want to sit here and erase this color manually, you could use the bucket erase and get rid of the color. Okay. You know, the other one I did, guys, I swear it was a lot more entertaining and visually pretty, but here we are. This is what happens when I forget to record. Okay, next a favorite thing I enjoy is this clipping. Clipping is fantastic. So it's going to essentially mirror this line art, what's been done on it, but it's doing it on a separate layer so that if you made an error, you don't have to sit there and try and color back in. You could simply make it erase. Like, let's say, let's make this really bright. We're going to go with pink. Okay, so we're going to make this super, super obnoxiously bright. All right, it's pink, right? But, oh, I don't want that that color anymore. You can simply hide this layer and it's back to being black. So that's one way to use it. I'm going to go to the color line art. Let's add some shadows to this. So this is a way I really like to add the clipping is for shadows. I hit the magic button on this and made it really big. We do not need it that big. 
Okay, so I'm going to use black. I'm going to do this canvas pencil tool. Um, and let's figure out how shadows would be. So again, you can see I'm actually, if this wasn't clipped, I would be painting all over. So I'm trying to think of the light hitting this way. Shadows, highlights, definitely something I'm still working on. But taking the time to think about it is the first step to figuring it out. And then I think that there would be a shadow along here. Okay, I have a little bit of bleed over, so I'm going to go in and just erase along here. Definitely worthwhile if you're working on something, you know, really fancy to zoom in, make sure you get it all. The reference is really nice because it lets you navigate around to different areas as you need to. Okay, there's our shadows. That's pretty harsh to look at. So let's label this one shadows. Okay, so here's where you can simply affect the opacity and bring it down to a more realistic shadow color. And we're going to do the opposite for Highlights. So we're going to create another layer, clip it down, go to the white, and because this is on its own layer, I'm not also erasing that shadow layer. And let's just increase that to a believable level. I don't think. Whoa, that's big. <laughs> yes, I did have a Michael Scott moment. All right, I think that makes more sense. Okay, you get the gist with clipping. So, clipping along with Protect Alpha. You can do that also. So if I wanted to add some different colors to this shadow area, then I can by selecting the pen tool. And then it's only going to affect these. So I want this to be a pink highlight. And that one, we're going to leave that whitish highlight. And then again, you're affecting the entire layer this time when you affect the opacity. We'll label this one highlights. Okay, maybe we'll go back to white. I'm doing it again. All right, the ribbon color is kind of boring. I want to have a nice blue ribbon. You can go right down to color line art, select protect alpha, and then let's get our nice pretty blue ribbon. There we go. Now it's pretty blue. We want to change the line art to match. We're going to drop this down, just make it a darker shade of blue so there is some contrast. 
There we go. Now it's a blue ribbon. Maybe it's from Belle's hair. She has a blue ribbon. So if you were to click on this lock, that would just keep you from drawing on this layer at entirely. Um, you can move it around still. So to move your layers, if for some reason you want this layer to be under the shadows for your organization, just hold down the layer and then drag it where you want it. And then you can simply unlock the layer by clicking that unlock again. All right. Other things that are neat to add are shadows. I'm pretty happy with this ribbon, so we're going to merge down. So I'm going to merge the highlight down. I'm going to merge the shadow down to the color line art. And this pink here, we're just going to delete that. Okay. So now if I wanted to move or manipulate this, I can. I'm just using the plus sign with the arrow. If I wanted to change the size or position of it, I can go to Select Transform, and then I can rotate it. I can make it really small, really long, really big. And then whatever you decide to do, click OK, otherwise it will not save your progress. So we're going to make it really big like this. I want to duplicate this because I'm going to do this as its own shadow. So I'm going to move that down. We are going to protect alpha. I'm going to make this whole thing black. So let's just see what happens. If we select the bucket tool, it's on canvas. So let's go to active layer. Right? It's There's too much information for it in this setting for it to color everything inappropriately. So unfortunately, I have yet to find a better way for that. We're going to have to go and just color this in. So my brush control isn't letting me get to a larger brush size. So I'm going to go to window, brush size, this one. And then we can go to 2000 and get this done really quick. All right, and then I just really want to lighten this up so it looks like a shadow. I also feel that the shadow would be slightly askew, perchance. Maybe that wouldn't make sense, but so it feels right to me. Okay, and then to finish this up, I just like to go back and add a color to the background. Okay, I have no idea why this would not let me use the bucket tool, so we made layer two. I'm just going to get rid of this one because I don't know why. I didn't want to play with us. And there's the solid color. If for some reason you're like, hey, I would really like this to have some sort of border effect or like a matting, let's do a rectangle. Not that big of a size of this. There you go. You could leave it like that. You could fill it in. Do it like that. All right, I'm going to wrap it up here. I know this got a little long, but I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, give it a like, like it's the happy little pup snows. Boop. Subscribe if you want to know when more videos like this come out. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks for joining me. Bye.